how did the American political discourse become so perverted that candidates like Mitt Romney and Rick Santorum and Newt Gingrich can say with a straight face that Ron Paul's foreign policy is dangerous? How did we get to the point where these men are even taken seriously? These men who never once put on a uniform running against the veteran that they are opposing. How is this possible? These neocon chicken hawk draft dodgers are the height of hypocrisy. I served as a sergeant on a Marine Corps Civil Affairs team in the Fallujah area in 2004 and found out the hard way that the greatest enemies of the Constitution to which I swore an oath, to which Ron Paul swore an oath, to which every military service member swears an oath, are not to be found in the sands of some far off land, but rather right here at home. And it just so happens that some of them are running for president. Now, these other GOP cowards that would hope they might one day be commander-in-chief of our great armed forces would be quick to point out, he's right! We have to defeat Barack Obama! And, and they would tell you, they would tell you that Obamacare is unconstitutional. And they might even tell you that welfare is unconstitutional. And they might even tell you when pressed that being groped at the airport is unconstitutional. Maybe, just maybe, they would take that position. But there's one candidate in this race who gives more than just lip service to the Constitution, who has the courage and the intellectual integrity to tell you that the Federal Reserve is unconstitutional. And that the bailouts and that corporatism are unconstitutional. And that the wars of exploitation in Iraq and Afghanistan just so happen to also be unconstitutional. And it just so happens that this one candidate has received more campaign contributions from active duty service members than all other candidates, including Barack Obama, put together, and that is none other than Texas Congressman, the good doctor, Ron Paul. On the night of the caucuses in Iowa, a young Army Corporal, Jesse Thorson, had the courage to attend the Ron Paul after party in uniform. He is a veteran of two tours in Afghanistan and is scheduled to go back for a third. While he was speaking so eloquently on CNN, the live feed mysteriously gave out. And while he only got in a couple of sentences, I think his words struck the American psyche like bullets when he said, quote, well, I think it would be even more dangerous to start nitpicking wars with other countries. Yeah. And then the feed started to get jittery and magically just started going out and he said, someone like Iran, Israel is perfectly capable and then it died. So again, I have to ask, when the troops overwhelmingly support the non-interventionist foreign policy of Dr. Ron Paul, when I can tell you from first-hand experience that in the Middle East, we are making enemies faster than we can kill them, how can these neocon chicken hawk draft dodgers get away with saying that this is dangerous? <laughs> Hold on, I got it. Step back for a second here. Because the problem is not 
that these would-be front men for the military-industrial complex are saying these things, but that it's believable. How propagandized must this country be to actually believe that not starting wars is dangerous? Maybe it's because none of our leaders like Obama ever served in uniform and the burden of combat is being increasingly borne by a smaller and smaller portion of the population. But how tuned out do you have to be to not realize that war itself is dangerous? Maybe these chicken hawk draft dodgers have been reading too many of those war novels where magically no one dies or their entire concept of combat comes from watching G.I. Joe cartoons. <laughs> or playing video games. So today I'm wearing my Marine Corps desert camouflage blouse and my veterans for the long pole t-shirt. I'm wearing this in honor of and in solidarity with Corporal Jesse Thorson. And I have a message to all of the active duty troops who might be hearing this. Have the courage of Corporal Thorson. Have the courage to speak out because the life you save might just be your own. Now, I don't normally walk around dressed like this. I don't like to wear my service on my sleeve, except that with my tattoos, I kind of literally do all the time. But when it's cold out, at least, you wouldn't know that I was ever in the service. And I have a lot of what you might call Ura gear laying around my apartment that I never wear anymore, like my jacket from the Marine Corps rugby team or the t-shirts that I bought on base at the PX at Camp Fallujah in 2004. Were, weren't those the days when I, for one, as a young, naive devil dog at least, could still cling to the notion that the U.S. government's foreign policy was a force for peace in the world? that it was a representation of the truly benevolent will of the American public. But not anymore. It is undeniable what our government has become. It is undeniable what our foreign policy has become because poor men continue to die in rich men's wars. And to the advocates of any form of interventionism, that is having troops deployed to anything other than what is absolutely necessary for the national defense, while you are debating whether or not there should be a timeline, or whether there should be 100,000 troops in Afghanistan, or 130,000 troops in Afghanistan, or whether we should be leading from the front, or the rear, or the left, or the right, the very moral bankruptcy of the premise is laid bare. I would never claim to speak on behalf of the troops. And I may even be speaking, thank you, I'm, I, I, but I'm going to try to speak tonight to something that I see at least behind the words and actions of so many active duty troops who have donated to Ron Paul and so many veterans who have spoken out against the wars. Because I think I know the primary reason that we are united in opposing our current foreign policy. It is the lack of a clear moral imperative. And to those of us who love freedom, who love it as more than just something to covet for ourselves, as something to achieve for every divine human being on this planet. The use of violence without a moral imperative is the gravest injustice and it must stop.
And I would say to my liberal friends, you can no longer hide behind the veil of Obama in any way, shape, or form deserving a Nobel Peace Prize. And if you do nothing to oppose him, and he is re-elected president, the blood of the next four years of his reign will be on your hands. And to the conservatives who refuse to admit the inherent contradiction in saying that big government at home is such a horrible idea, but that somehow having big government with guns and uniforms imposing martial law on countries on the other side of the world is somehow going to make us safer or bring them freedom and democracy, I implore you, I beg of you, listen to the troops! Listen to the troops who support Ron Paul! Listen to the troops who tell you that Ron Paul is right, that blowback is real, that I saw it in Fallujah in 2004, and it's the same thing that the troops are telling us is happening every single day. Help us make it stop! But it seems the keepers of the conversation are determined to deny reality. The pundits and the politicians are determined to silence the voices of the troops and the veterans. If it was any other candidate who you could say they had received more campaign contributions from active duty soldiers than all the other candidates put together, this race would be over. Can you imagine it? Well, Mitt Romney seems to have the support of the military, which pretty much guarantees him the presidency, so this race is pretty much over. But you know what I hear instead? Well, that's just a few of the troops. Well, they're just young, because a lot of the guys in the military are young and naive, and, and Ron Paul has a lot of support from young people, you know? Exactly. I actually heard a national conservative talk radio host when confronted with this inconvenient fact about Ron Paul dismiss it by saying, those troops? Well, a lot of the troops are young and just don't know what kind of world we really live in. That's what we're up against. Well, it's time to make it clear to the world that Ron Paul is the choice of the troops. So we, Veterans for Ron Paul 2012, are going to march on the White House. all active duty troops and veterans to march in formation with us. We will gather at noon on President's Day, February 20th at the base of the Washington Monument and march to the White House. Platoon, halt, lift, face! We will then, in a symbolic gesture, turn our backs on the President. facing away from the president. Present arms! And we will render a hand salute facing a folded flag 
a folded American flag as is draped over the coffins of so many Americans, facing a gathering of family members of the troops, and we will hold it for as many seconds as they have died, as troops have died under the presidency of Barack Obama. Order arms! And we will march silently away to carry on the fight for the message of Ron Paul, because this message we'll defend. We've already got the Facebook page for this event, and I implore you all to help promote it, get the word out, make videos, tell your friends, Get that veteran that you know who's just waiting for an opportunity, the chance to speak out and have their voice heard. For far too long, the voice of the troops has been kept from the American political dialogue, but not anymore. You want to support the troops? It's time to start listening to them. By the way, I'm getting really sick and tired of having smoke blown up my butt by people who think that thanking a veteran for their service somehow excuses them for being sorry excuses for Americans. And every time someone thanks me for my service, I'm quick to point out that by speaking out against the wars, by supporting Ron Paul, by being a champion of the Constitution, I am able to be a far greater service to my country than anything I was ever able to do in uniform. And I know that right here in this very room, we have a group of people who have done more for freedom and the Constitution and the American way than most of the troops in Iraq and Afghanistan. So, for all of you who donated to the Ron Paul campaign, for all of you who waved signs, for all of you who made YouTube videos, for all of you who back last time threw snowballs, for all you spammers in your parents' basements. For all of you who wrote letters to the editor, registered new Republicans, knocked on doors, made phone calls, rode your bike across the country, started that website and wrote that song. Thank you for your service. here tonight, raise your hand, please. That's right. The Levolution celebrates people who are willing to put their lives on the line for what they believe in. And I'm not here to blow smoke up your butt about anything you ever did in uniform, but I want to thank you for being with us today and having the courage to stand with Ron Paul. So to all of you out there who want to thank us for our service, who want to honor us for having put our lives in the line to defend this country and realize that our government would rather abuse that good faith than do anything to actually defend this country, it's time to help us do something about it. I'll see you in Washington, D.C. on President's Day. Yeah.